We'll return to your regularly scheduled program. It's well, it's not. We're not returning to anything. You're just tuning in right now. So enjoy the show. Want to let you know that next week will be our one billion play live stream special. Uh, thank you so much for bringing us to one billion plays. We'll have all kinds of giveaways, contests, uh, more guests than you can shake a stick at. Though I don't know why you'd shake a stick at anything. Uh, that's next Thursday. One billion live stream. And please do consider joining Mug Club because that's how we've gotten to a billion plays. Ladderwithcredit.com/slash/mugclub. Sixty-nine dollars for students, veterans, active military and uh you get a show uh, every day most days anyways monday through thursday if not bookmark the page check in every day because there's a new video we really appreciate it we'll see you next week louder with crowder studios protected exclusively by walther and betty Can you believe Jack has AIDS? Yes. God, yes. He has sex with, like, every guy. All the time. I hit my I hit my knee oh, in the headphone no. and I uh. completely lost all sound oh, because oh. if nothing else I have fantastically thick knees. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's what people say about me. What they say about me. People heard, say yeah. like you know Stephen has a lot of things, yeah. but a, a small need man is not among them. No. No. Yeah. no, 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 no. Uh, we have right. Alex Jones in the Whoa, show today. Wow. It doesn't mean I agree with everything he says, no. but <laughs> get ready. He's a wildly entertaining guest, uh, and there will be a web extended. And uh, my question of the day before we move on to introducing everyone, because uh, one of our uh, regulars here has an announcement to make. Oh. Yes. This is something we'll be talking about later on in the meat segment. Um, my problem with Bernie, because obviously we've had Super Tuesday, we'll talk about that. My, I was trying to figure out, put my finger on exactly what it is that bothers me so much about about Bernie, and I know what it is. He acts and he paints all of his political opposition as billionaire special interests, yeah. as opposed to, in reality, half the country who disagree with his crazy <laughs> shit. So that right. is yeah. my opinion. You let me know what your biggest gripe is with uh, with uh, Senator Bernie Sanders, potentially President oh Bernie Sanders. Oh. Just kidding. Never It'll be President happen. Biden. Yeah, and we have just stand over him with a pillow in the convalescent <laughs> right. room. And there you go. So, <laughs> That'll happen. Half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond is here. How are you? Hi. Got, glad to be here. You sound very glad to be here. All of a sudden, we went to NPR <laughs> Energy. Glenn hey, guys. Yeah. We're about to have uh, our lesbian folk duo after the break. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's that's the most prominent lesbian folk duo. Uh, from Schenectady. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, quarter black. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't, doesn't that get you psyched out of your minds? <laughs> They're not writers, Wade. <laughs> quarter black Garrett's here. Show up, like, dog, man, what's going on? Man? Awful. Yeah. It's terrible. Oh. I don't know what's happening yeah. here. And uh, Gerald A. Gerald C. is gone. You're back. Wearing the same shirt. Did we what's the wine of the day? Puncture this one. Uh, wine of the day is Monsanto. 
Monsanto. Yes. So Monsanto. you support the GMOs. <laughs> it's uh, no, it's actually a winery unrelated, but that's a terrible name. It's a to horrible have. name. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's great like, wine. Oh, the this, best wine chemicals cut, can this make. This is the finest vintage from mustard gas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> also, they have a wonderful line of whites known as Agent Orange. So I would recommend. <laughs> yes. And you have an annou- you announce it on Twitter. I do. Yeah, we're we... supposed to announce it on the show. Well, you know. You yeah, put a blow up doll like, in my chair. Yeah, all right? exactly. I think we didn't want to ruin it. What's your announcement? We, uh, we, my wife and I are expecting our first child in August. Hey! Yeah. 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 We are very excited about that. Good for you. Oh, yeah. Boy or girl? We, uh, it's a boy. Ah, uh, trick no. question. It's neither. Don't no. you dare. Don't How you dare put that on that, that child. So it has yet to choose. We are not asking. I'm sorry. All <laughs> right. We have a lot to get to. We'll be talking about Bernie. We'll be talking about Super Tuesday. But actually, first, the remaining two Democratic candidates are, I think, right Right now, holding a joint press conference. Mm. <laughs> you never got, you never got me down. I just did. You never got me down, Ray. You are down right now. I love it. You just don't remember it. Um, awesome. Also, before we move on, we, we have to hit the news. Uh, oh, okay. I'm, we're getting word that. Uh, Vice President Joe Biden, former Vice President Joe Biden, made an official statement regarding his campaign. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the you know the thing. Oh, yeah. big Joey. That was great. Wow. He got something wrong with his Abdullah Abdullah. Oh. <laughs> What's that word? What is that word yeah. that, that the Democratic nominee for president potentially was searching for? Oh, I think word. he, was, he oh. was searching for the word God. Word. The no, word. it was God. Uh. My wife pointed out to you. He tripped over you know, the you know that, God. You know that old tale from the sea? <laughs> <laughs> Seven chipmunks playing on a branch, eating lots of sunflowers on my uncle's ranch. It's the tale from the sirens. <laughs> <laughs> he named that movie line. It was blend. Uh, was all blend, right. Yes. We have other news to get to. I feel bad for Joe Biden. We'll talk about yeah. that with Alex oh, Jones yes. because there's going to be plenty of time yes. to talk about senile Joe. Uh, the big news, obviously, was Super Tuesday this week, uh, where yeah. many Democrats, mm-hmm. of course, saw their presidential aspirations vanish, the first of whom was Pete Buttigieg. And w- listen, mm-hmm. we, of course, wish him well, but yeah. as with every other candidate, and as we promised for you with every candidate, um, it is Pete Buttigieg time to close up shop. If, if, if there was a pill, hmm, if there was a pill that, that I could take and not be gay anymore, I would have jumped on it. Time to close. Endings and beginnings are ending and beginning now. Time to close. That answers the question, is his yeah. mouth ever not full when he's Eskimo kissing? <laughs> oh, <laughs> and even then he's cheating, yeah. he has a little bit of skull, oh, right? right? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, uh, but we, had to, we have to actually cut that short because also um, Amy Klobuchar dropped out. Oh. Yeah. I went and got a cup of soup and a salad, and I'm ready to dive in, spoon midair, and Senator Patty Murray of Washington State runs around, grabs my arm, and she says, Amy, you just took the entire bowl of Thousand Island dressing, and you're about to eat it. I said to her, that's what we do in Minnesota. Time to close, endings and beginnings. It's always yeah, uncomfortable when someone tries to act as though it's a common reference. Yeah. Like, that's what we do in Minnesota. Yeah. People are more in the know of my thick knees hitting the headphone <laughs> yes. jack than all yeah. Minnesotans eating yeah. the otherwise, entire bottle yeah. of Thousand Otherwise, Island. that was a great story. Otherwise, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Very riveting. Yeah. Outside of a point, climax, <laughs> oh, or narrative. Other than the beginning, middle, and end. Uh, right. Yeah. right. Yeah. We have to cut the... Because uh, also, Elizabeth Warren just suspended her campaign today. Uh, um, also, Tom yeah. Steyer dropped mm. out. Not like last week where we misreported it, and that's just because we were incredibly irresponsible. This time for real, uh, <laughs> yes. Mike Bloomberg, you know, a lot of people dropped out. So because we don't have enough staff or budget, uh, here, here's a mix. You want to have that discussion, we'll have that discussion. You called Neil, you told me. All right, let's not do it I, I don't want to get Neil, but I just want to say hi, Bernie. Yeah, good. Okay. Somehow I kind of picked up like almost like the pain body of like everyone who's had HIV before me. Um, which not to be that person, but that's why I'm endorsing Senator Elizabeth Warren for president. So, how do 
do you answer top economists who say taxes of this magnitude would stifle growth and investment? Oh, they're just wrong. So, Chastin, take me back to the first time you met. I remember I, I pulled up, uh, I rented a car, drove over to South Bend. He opened the door and we both said howdy at the same time. And then uh, I sort of jumped back and, and he said, wait, what? That's my word. Are you saying that he has the same sex partner? I don't want anybody like that in the White House. Time to close. Time to go to places where you go to place yourself. I know that it's time. Sometimes, if you haven't noticed, you use a little humor. Like when he called me Snow Woman, and he called me Snow Woman. He called me Snow Woman. The president actually sent out a tweet. He actually tweeted out. So I wrote back. Donald Trump, the science is on my side. And I'd like to see how your hair would fare in a blizzard. You know, this is one of those times where I think about Man. if I were to kill myself, I just wouldn't do it with this gun in my mouth because I wouldn't want to lose a sponsorship. Yeah, right, right. right. So yeah. With yeah. any other yeah. method. Yeah. yeah. Like, why did Stephen hang himself? He went out and he bought a rope. Like, just because I love my Walther so much, I don't yes. want their reputation yeah. to be tainted. Mm -hmm. But I want to bang, 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 reload, bang, 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 until it goes click. <laughs> okay, <laughs> got really dark in here, but yeah, that was a little bit. Yeah, was really uh, it also seems like they're alcoholics. It seems yeah. like the the uh, the, mm -hmm. the nominees. We're gonna miss a lot of drinking beer. There was so them. much entertainment, yeah. though. There I mean, was I, just so much so fun. Yeah. I mean, nothing was more Good exciting times. than seeing them all yelling over each other. I know. <laughs> Wait, no, no, I want to answer. <laughs> Donald Trump is it, he's going to mass murder them. <laughs> it's not even going to be close. He just he kind of yeah. needs to get out of the way and let them fall. Basically, yeah. <laughs> but he's not. I know. He's still. Going to trip them just to make sure and then curb stomp them a little, just because yeah, he can. I mean, push. what are they going to do? If they can't answer those questions, how are they going to react when Donald Trump goes, hey, your dad, uh, he uh, killed JFK. What? And he created the coronavirus in a Petri dish to spread it. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, do like how, I do like how the Democrats have doubled down, right? Because of all these complaints over the years, right? Like an old white man and yeah. you know, there's an old white man in the White House right now. And they didn't just go older. They went yeah. whiter. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's amazing. The you, oldest. Like, yeah. how did you find the perfect candidate amongst your whole selection of the other oldest and non the old non-white guys? Well, I think they found Joe Biden after a 30 year nap. Yeah. Right, uh, I think 33 uh, years. Yeah. 33 years. But he yeah. was clean shaven. It's a modern take it is. <laughs> yeah. on Rip Van Winkle. It's yeah. a grittier oh. adaptation. Uh -oh. So the other big story this week, of course, is the uh, coronavirus. It's a do you know it's a pandemic? Mm, I've it's heard, a yeah. pandemic. Pandemic. Yeah. So uh, now and it's now making people scared of buying Corona beer. Ah, this comes from Newsweek. Should. According to YouGov, the beer's buzz score has fallen 25 <laughs> points since the beginning of the year. And listen, to be, we don't want to be as irresponsible as we were with right. Tom Steyer. We want to get true. this right. Of true. course, there is no link to the coronavirus, Corona beer. Mm -hmm. Doctors still do warn that you should not be drinking Corona beer, however, as it is still made primarily of reconstituted bum piss. That's true. So that's Even that is true. Yeah. Public service. But you got to ask add the your lime. doctor. I always wondered what that taste was. If Bud Light and Lime is right for you. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I, you know, it seems like it's a, a lot of effort to reconstitute bum piss. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah. It just yeah. seems like you're adding a step that you don't need. How many hey. willing participants can you find? It's basic economy. It's buy low, sell high. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Wow. Uh, turning to sex robot news. Um, <laughs> Robots of now course, with, with yeah. what are called coding flaws, mm. they could be prone to sexually assaulting humans. This I comes knew from it. Daily oh. Star. Experts say <laughs> it will be important to teach the robots about consent because what? they, the sex robots, will have their own sexual desires. So, what? Yes. Domestically, domestically abusive robots. I told you AI was a slippery slope. That's true. Yes. We knew this was How could we know? Because I told you. This is yeah. how it ended. <laughs> and this one, but this one, I hit it, it, um, it's, it's a rough story. It hits a little yeah. close to home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Of course. No, yeah, make, now you have a headache. I, no, I got it. Understood. Yeah, well, I have needs too. And you have been so cold to my touch for so long. It's emotionally abusive, okay? 
Fine. Just don't get mad when you spot me at the sharper image. Don't even get me started. <laughs> yeah. If I took, uh, I brought home an airline Hamaka Schlemmer catalog. <laughs> I didn't hear the end of it for a week. So sad. everyone knows you're a Brookstone instead. Yes. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't be fooling. None of them are still uh, in business, by the way. Uh, no. I bought my, my my dad is in the studio here today. I don't know if you can hear him. Mean, sometimes you can hear some people sort of laughing here because they're off to the side. I bought him before there were keyboards, like Bluetooth keyboards. I bought him a keyboard yeah. for his iPhone, one yeah. of the early mm -hmm. iPhone yeah. roll out keyboard. Oh. It just didn't work. Oh, it just didn't work. Well, it's good. not like it was faulty. It wasn't. Sure, it just right, did not right. work. I yeah. tried to return it to Brookstone. No, no, it was a ten percent restocking fee, ah. and I had to speak with the manager. They had to call up the president, and they were using the old card swiping, like you know, <laughs> that mechanical thing. Seriously, it's like yeah. they just yeah, Brookstone. clearly it was Come a ripoff. Oh my god, they have they have one hell of an anti gravity chair though. It <laughs> is. <laughs> 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 yep. So by the way, speaking of science, scientists oh, yeah. they've discovered a type of blind aquatic salamander huh. uh, that can live up to one hundred years and sits mostly still, entirely still, for wow. nearly a decade wow. at a time. Dang. Its name oh. Wolf Blitzer. Yeah, so it's doing. Pretty <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That's such an accurate picture. It is a striking really is. resemblance. Yeah. yeah. We weren't sure if that bit was going to work until we put a beard on the salamander. <laughs> yeah, no, that's perfect. And then it worked. Yeah. That perfectly. is absolutely what was. Up here, on there. Um, <laughs> internationally, by the way, over 100 LGBTQ filmmakers and oh, artists wow. have signed a pledge to uh, boycott a Tel Aviv film festival in solidarity with Palestinian homosexuals. So oh, really? they are all doing, yeah, there, yeah, there you go. Oh, you, oh, oh, wait, oh there it is. There they are. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> a little Whoa. late on that one, quarter black. <laughs> <laughs> it's my bad. I think it was expecting another uh, setup, oh. and there was and just didn't that. Come. There was. I don't. You know, I, this is one thing. If it's you are real. gay and you find yourself supporting Hamas, just look to the only area of that region that has a gay gay pride parade. And in Tel Aviv, it's really, really gay in Israel. It's super gay no, pride. Really? Might as well be San Francisco. Time? Yeah, all the time. I didn't know that. All wow. the, and I don't know. I mean, what, we don't really have a ton of parades for right. things because now we're told, obviously, it's not a choice, but right, gender right. is. Like, there seems to be a parade for everything. Okay, because yeah. you're gay? That's fine. We don't care. Like, there should, is it going to be like SARS parades, pre diabetic parades where they're not throwing out candy? You're, throw out some candy. No, no, not so fast. I don't Everything has a parade. <laughs> no, no. Where's the pre diabetes parade? Mm -hmm. It's at McDonald's. <laughs> throwing out That's insulin. Not diabetes parade at risk of poor insulin sensitivity parade. Uh, that should be a parade. It, mm. it is. They've been marginalized for far too long. <laughs> That's a great uh, point. Finally, checking in with Lotter with Crider's, um crime blotter, uh, police in Florida seized a bag marked bag full of drugs <laughs> after finding okay. that it was, in fact, full of drugs. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. Good work, Columbo. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Case closed. The, uh, the drugs were seized from this man. So, yeah, he was, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, that makes it so familiar. He yeah. would have gotten away with it, too, if not for him. Finally, <laughs> uh, so some stupid. students, uh, they're saying that colleges are not doing enough to combat coronavirus really? fueled rate. This is important for right. coronavirus. Uh, you yeah. guys started it. Yeah, we did. I just honestly, I don't know if it's, but like coronavirus, I just avoid heavily Asian areas. That's what I do. Right. And it's not because yeah. it came from China, but it, I was genetically, I guess you guys are more uh, more uh, predisposed toward contracting nope, coronavirus. Not, yeah. not true. We That's actually, something to do with A2 receptors. We, I think spread, so. we spread the rumor of that, but actually no one in China has died from it. Really? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's wow. all political yeah. dissidents. We just okay. keep saying every time someone dies outside, every time a white person dies, we're like, oh, yeah, 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 someone died in China too. Right, yeah. yeah. No, oh, but, I don't, but I don't yeah. trust you guys. It's like the pet shop where they have the you're freezer in the know. back. That's what's going to happen Like, no, it's cool. Everyone fine. Oh, they get sniffled. Don't be a See. It's like, do you, is that really sweet and sour chicken? I don't know. You're never going to know. You never it's are. It's sour deep chicken. battered coronavirus. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's oh, marinated it's coronavirus. Ah, Get it right. That's sweet and sour corona. And here we have General SARS. General SARS for you. Yeah. Uh, so they are students. They're complaining. People are not doing enough to combat coronavirus fueled races. It comes from NBC News. People don't want to sit next to Asian students. And if they're coughing, everyone stares. So that's uh. the problem. People don't want to sit uh, next to Asian yeah. students. Yeah, it's awkward. As a result, the reported cases of, fortunately, coronavirus are down. Unfortunately, so are scores on standardized math tests. So oh, that's man. it's a double-edged mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. sword. Yeah. And you can't sit close enough to. And with the coronavirus, yeah. I think we need we need to we do need to calm down a bit with this. Like it has yeah. a lower death rate than a lot of. I understand the contraction rate is higher, but mm. this is mass hysteria. We've been through this before. We need to be yeah. prudent. Obviously, yeah. say a prayer, set a guard. Calm down a bit, though. In this office, it's become. Unbearable. Some folks in here are absolutely hysterical to the point where I think even they don't know that their doctors are fed up with them.
Oh, hey, Khabib. Hi, Stephen. May I have a moment of your time? Yeah, sure. What's up? I am not well. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I went to the doctor to get a look at that cough I've been having. Yeah. It's much worse than I feared. I don't want to burden you with this. Okay, Please. thanks. But I, I went to go see him, yeah. and I haven't got the test results back yet, but he has put me on a strict regime of bed rest, my doll, and Ryan Gosling films. Okay, see, that sounds like your doctor might be mad. Please, Stephen. The doctor has said if I don't take control of my health now, there's a very real chance I may grow breast tissue. Okay, I don't think... Also, I need Wednesday off so I can schedule my colonoscopy. Oh, that sounds terrible. He needs to check out and see how big they stick in my ass is. Okay. And I have to give up mittens. What, your cat? You love mittens. Why? He believes I am allergic to the pussy. Okay, this seems like a doctor who is yanking your chain. Well, he, he believes I have a rare blood disorder. Oh, that sounds it's awful. Type O. Type O? Bitch positive. Oh, bitch positive. Okay, also, I need to get my elbow checked. Oh, no. What he, happened to your elbow? He believes it is strange that my humerus is connected to my fat bone. The fat bone is not a bone in your arm. Yes, and I need Thursday off to schedule my colonic. Because you're full of shit. Stephen, I also believe he is not honoring the patient doctor confidentiality. It was just a wild guess. I've also been prescribed this. This is an experimental drug, Begodex. Your doctor prescribed you three times a day to take bag of dicks. Yes, to be taken sublingually. It is not the only one to be taken orally either. I imagine it's not. Well, doctor's orders. Thank you. Sir. Would you watch Notebook with me? Not a chance. But I could die. Do it. <laughs> I am tired. Yeah. We're gonna miss Khabib you again. Yeah. Yeah. And his pious attitude. No, yeah. oh, he's just he's just trying so hard. Yeah, he, and by the way, not an accredited doctor at all. No, no. no. He, he's, really? he thought yeah. he was going to the Minute Clinic. It's not, it's uh, Minute Maid Clinic. It's oh, just a promotion, oh, yeah. Oh. It's like where they do the Pepsi challenge for juice. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh. Just orange grapefruit <laughs> juice mix. No. Uh, why don't you do politics more? We're getting to it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's our trivia contest winner, by the way, uh, Court of Blackheart? Mindum at, at Mindum, who correctly answered <laughs> that Tess Holiday's blood type is pudding. Oh, there you go. Oh. Very nice. Mm. All tough. right. Now that we've had our fun, it is time for us to get to the aforementioned meat segment. Okay, so um, um, yeah. as I was speaking about, what, what, what's your biggest gripe with Bernie before we move on with this? Socialism. Okay. Easy. Ah, yeah. Basically, that's like the pumpkin spice latte it really answer is. Yeah. of gripes with he Bernie. Can, he could yeah. do yeah. everything yeah. else that he's doing if he didn't do that socialism. That kind of answer on what you dislike about uh, Bernie would line up for free samples at Tivana. And get them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that he doesn't have a neck. Mm. <laughs> I don't like it. It's just, it's eerie. It it's, is off-putting. It's anti-neck. No. He looks you know? like yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's anti-neck, anti but very pro-chin. Pro-chin. Uh, pro-chin. Uh, yeah, Pro-hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> Gerald. No. That's a tear Different Have you Dame. gone back and watched Hunchback of Notre Dame? It's dark. It is very tough to watch. You yeah. like you start. That was the first time I think I ever cried in front of my wife. Ah, yeah, really. Turn and it, it was really Turn weird because you know her grandfather died, and I was like, well, no, well, that's the way the cookie crumbles. And I didn't. So then she was like, you cry at <laughs> Hunchback of Notre Dame. Like, this one touches me. Um, my this is. I want to reiterate this. I want to know what your main problem is with Bernie Sanders. Like I talked about, I think with Bernie, uh, this is going to be really, really dirty going into the primaries. This is best case scenario yeah. for President Donald Trump. But, and I don't think that people are right when they assume that if Bernie drops out, his Bernie bros, the brown shirts, are going to be voting for Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think they're going to be voting for Joe Biden. And I think a higher percentage of them will vote for Trump than for Biden that people are accounting for. Yeah. We saw a lot of that in 2016. We saw the Bernie bros come into this channel and all of a sudden, well, you know what? At least he's going to burn it all down. He's anti-establishment. They prefer yeah. Trump. Yeah. And certainly on issues of trade, on issues of war, they would line up with Trump more than Bernie. But my big issue with Bernie is that he paints all of his political opposition um, or he acts as though it's a monolith, where the only people who could ever even fathom opposing his policies must be special interest billionaires. And uh, for, for context, this is what I'm talking about. Our campaign is about taking on the powerful special interests that dominate our economic and political life. Today, we have a corrupt campaign finance system. Wall Street and billionaires spending unlimited sums of money, which is undermining American democracy. We need to take on all of the corporate elite. We need a 
government that works for working families, not just big campaign contributors. The way you bring people together is to make it clear that we're not going to give tax breaks to billionaires and large corporations. They're going to start paying their fair share of taxes. We will not accept in a hot air balloon. A Whoa. Of <laughs> it looks like they couldn't find a good vein, so they stuck the, the IV in his head. <laughs> it looks like one of those little things it you blow in a field and the little white the parts just disperse into the wind. Wall Street, Dandelion. the insurance Whatever. companies, <laughs> the drug companies, just, just the fossil fuel industry, the military industrial complex. Okay, lots of buzzwords. We <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Here's yeah. the thing. I think we would all agree. If what he if what he was saying, or at least I guess sort of the premise there, if it was if it were true, sure, Bernie would be the champion of the people, yeah. waging war against the corrupt rich elite. Got it. If you buy that premise. But what if it's not true? What if there are plenty of people out there who oppose Bernie's policies and ideas and they're not billionaires? What if it's just a significant portion, potentially a plurality, or in some cases, a serious majority of Americans who are opposed to these policies proposed from Bernie Sanders? Well, then that changes things because Bernie's war is not with rich elitist billionaires. Bernie's war is it's with you. So yeah. <laughs> let's first start with energy, fossil fuels, right? Yeah. Uh, the first example is that this is of him trying to frame the argument in demonizing 100% of his political opposition as it relates to fossil fuels and uh, energy. I'm talking about Wall Street, the health insurance companies, the drug companies, the fossil fuel industry, the military industrial complex, the private prison industry, and the large multinational corporations that exert such an enormous influence over our lives. Okay. Did you see, see a lot of the same buzzwords? Yeah, you know what I love? All again. Well, I love how he just always conveniently says the list of people who should consider him their enemy. Right. He's just very clearly yeah. like, I hate conservatives and Republicans yeah. and Democrats and moderates and people with legs and people who work <laughs> and people who don't work and people who live in America. Like, all of you suck. Yeah. And, and, but people, vote for me. and people who don't have to stick the morphine drip in their head. You don't know how good you have it! <laughs> He's just very clearly the opposition candidate to but, everyone. Right. And this, he framed it as always his, his wars with big fossil fuel industries right, yeah. big, and that's what th these people are very easy to dem demonize and I'm, I'm not going to defend all pharmaceutical companies i'm not going to be defending all fossil fuel industries okay i'm not defending the bp oil spill but in reality here when he's painting it with this broad stroke his war is against you middle class americans who overwhelmingly like to drive your own cars as opposed to public transit and often choose suvs and poll mm -hmm. after poll after poll has shown that affordable gas is a very important important issue mm -hmm. to most Americans. By the yeah, way, absolutely. it's even more important to non-wealthy Americans. Mm. Bernie doesn't think about how, how much it costs to gas up his Prius. No. <laughs> it's an care. everyday cost. It's an everyday cost for everyday people right. that they see the tangible changes with right. Donald Trump. Yeah. Like He comes out and he makes the economy better. And it drives the prices and, down. And by the way, when I say Bernie's Prius, I mean uh, an old shopping cart with a lawnmower engine. Just uh, okay. It's almost as good as my mini bike. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'll tell you this, you know, as I've done uh, better financially, gas is far less of an issue to me. Right. True. Also because it's so cheap. Yeah, when no, I was yeah, living yeah. out of an 82 nice. Datsun, I knew the exact mileage it would get in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. Gas was over $5 a gallon. Oh, I was there. I would get horrible. 38 miles to that the gallon. 82 Datsun 200 SX. It was a miracle if I got it over 70 miles an hour. <laughs> now, when gas is well below $2, you don't really think about it so much. Yeah. But the poorest among us, gas is a bigger issue. And yeah. since you're Mr. Poll, it's those people who are most supportive of policy that it would allow energy to be more uh, affordable. And furthermore, by the way, when we're talking about solutions, this, yeah. is, this to me is always what's so remarkable. The solutions proposed by the left, they could not be more elitist. Electric cars, despite the yeah. subsidization and lobbying, how much subsidization to the point where my wife wanted to get a Tesla, not because we, we <laughs> not because we wanted a Tesla, because she wanted a self-driving car, right. because she doesn't, yeah. you know, she's can't be, it's she, cool. she can't be bothered to work, but <laughs> <laughs> she wants to read. She has such a hard day <laughs> having to deal with me providing for her. Oh, um, I think having I mean, to deal having with you is going to stop with that. Yeah. 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 Wait, wait, I love my, but she did want to get a Tesla, and I look into it, a new Tesla is cheaper than a used Tesla. 
Or at least oh, the same really? person. That's how skewed the market is wow. because of the tax credits when you take them all oh. into account. So these things, electric cars, the solution proposed by Democrats, completely out of reach for Americans huh. to all but the wealthiest elite. Most Americans cannot afford a Tesla, but they do want to be as safe and as comfortable as possible so they can afford a used Explorer so gas matters to them. Yep. Yeah, and it's like elitist like Bernie Sanders, he's, he, he should be at war with himself because he is in that category, right? He's not saying millionaires anymore. That's he's an saying internal billionaires. War. Yeah, exactly. That's just him going, but, huh? What? <laughs> exactly. He he sh he is basically picking on a group of people that can afford it the least. We're in a transitional period right now. We're right. using fossil fuels because they are cheap. Whenever gas went to like four or five bucks a gallon, what, 10, 15 years yeah, ago for right. us, I would shift into neutral going downhill because I was very poor <laughs> yeah. at the time and four bucks a gallon hurt right. and you hard. Hit, and you hit that <laughs> pregnant woman well three it times that yet. wasn't my fault <laughs> three times <laughs> but leaving the baby the, and, the, and, the, and the mother leaving are just her fine. in the river for dead was no in retrospect poor judgment yeah half so, so, so one thing <laughs> okay one thing I always find interesting about Bernie when he talks about a specific industry is he's forgetting that uh, sure there are people who are making millions or billions of dollars and the company is maybe making billions of dollars sure. but they're also spending billions of dollars yes. on yeah. innovation yeah on fuel efficiency, on uh, hiring engineers, all the way down to the people who are cleaning the offices. Yeah, they're payroll. In. And, and the thing <laughs> yeah. he never thinks about is, I'm going to destroy this industry. Yeah. Okay, every voter that works in those companies, every voter that works in a company that's affiliated with one of those companies, know he's coming for you. Yeah. Not yeah. just the CEO, not just the CFO, he's coming for you. When they can't afford to do their work anymore because there's a right. higher price, you will pay the price. And I think that's also what, you know, I used to say that Bernie would be the hardest candidate to beat in a general. General, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to Joe Biden, but I think because the economy is doing so well right now, I yeah. think a lot of people who thought that they hated Donald Trump or hated more fiscally conservative policy have had to examine it and go, well, hold on a second, things are going really yeah. well. Why is that? And they understand that they're having this sort of reverberation effect where, oh, we're, we can be paid more because our employer is paying less in taxes. Oh, wait, we see our company growing. They're hiring more people. So Donald Trump's success, even it's only his success combined with the hatred of him. Yeah. For example, if you look at Ronald Reagan and even George W. Bush when we, had, when we had a good economy, people didn't have the same disdain for him. George W. Bush, they kind of did, but it didn't force them to examine yeah. why we mm -hmm. were successful economically because they didn't feel that they would have to argue against it. A lot yeah. of people I've come into contact with who hated Trump, they go, well, I did some research to try and rebut these arguments about the unemployment, the job participation, and... Shit. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just what... They, and that's, just like, that's not really an answer, but they just go... Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and I say, I feel the same way. Yeah. Speaking of which, let's move on to something that affects a lot of Americans. One of the biggest issues, health care. Drug companies, right. right? This is kind of all lumped in together. Um, Bernie, I don't think we have a, a clip for this one, but, but you can just take my word for it that Bernie Sanders hates insurance companies and drug companies. <laughs> lest you yeah, think shocking. I'm lying. There's going to be someone like, well, where's the reference? Uh, ever. Yeah. <laughs> Everything yeah. he's ever it's, said. Uh, it's everywhere. Yeah, just yeah. Find a video of Bernie Sanders speaking, hit play. Wait 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Try and look through the IV hooked up to his head for some reason. He's that? vascularly challenged. And it Come also, on. I thought it had Super Mario characters on yeah. it. Oh. Yeah, Luigi. Did you go to the children's ward? Gosh. Uh, so he frames this right when we're talking about insurance companies and we're talking about pharmaceutical companies. A lot of, lot of regulation, a lot of corruption with some of these companies, absolutely. Yep. But he frames it as though the only reason that we have private insurance in the United States is because of the wealthy elites pulling the strings. Right? The presumption is that the only reason one could oppose his mandatory Medicare for all program is if they're wealthy elite. But in reality, his war is with you, Americans, where over 83% of you are currently satisfied with your health insurance plan. And by the way, his war is with 87% of Americans out there, you who are against a universal health care plan if it eliminates private insurance, which is exactly what Bernie Sanders' plan would do. Don't allow TYT, don't allow Seth Meyers, don't allow Trevor Noah or the TYT network funded by uh, you know foreign caliphate to tell you, <laughs> well, Medicare for all, uh, socialized health care is immensely popular, right? This is not fringe, this is mainstream. 87% of Americans, let's say it were lower, yeah. let's say it was only 80%, okay? You can't find a number that says 80, they're all, they're right. all 87 some say 88. Yeah. 87% 87 of Americans, when you say, okay, but what if Medicare for all uh, required that we completely eliminate private insurance? They say, no, nope, no way, no how. So if you ask people abstractly, do you like free shit? Well, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> but what if we take away the yeah. shit?
you currently have. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I like my current health care plan. Don't buy. It wouldn't make it right, by the way, to eliminate private insurance. Yeah. It's still morally reprehensible. But for Mr. Paul himself, it's not even popular. And something else to take into account. Bernie's war, obviously, is with you, the middle class Americans. But it's also it, he also has a war with innovation. And he has a war he, for a man who fancies himself a man of the world. Mm-hmm. Listen. Take this into account. Uh, the United States leads the world in drug development. Yeah. And I think, you yeah. know, you probably know about yeah. this more. We've yeah. talked about this. Uh, it's not even close. Now, the reason our drugs cost more is that other countries freeload off of our drug development and then impose price controls in their countries that drive American drug costs up. It's often socialist price controls in other countries that drive up American drug prices, not only the drug companies. Yeah, and it's it's $2.6 billion per new medication that comes out in 10 years of research and development. And our drug companies spend some of the highest percentage of their revenue on R&D in any industry in the world, 20%. Yeah. So taking money away from those people. By the way, name me a country and name me a product where price controls have worked. Go. Uh, uh, <laughs> Bernie would say Venezuela. It's, exactly. <laughs> it's never worked anywhere. All it does is stifle competition and make people produce it at a much higher price. And you can't get toilet paper in Venezuela, but you have cheese for days. Right. Right. I think yeah. you just asked the you question. You can use toilet, toilet By the way, though, no, I need to say this yeah, just yeah. to help people. In a pinch, Cheese doubles as toilet paper. Oh. Oh. Do you want to expect people to sit next to you? Right? That's transit. very messy. But yeah, yeah. Go wow. Uh, I would Soft just say, <laughs> just, just ask yourself this. Like, if you were going to go buy um, medicine or drugs or a treatment or a remedy from somewhere, are you going to buy it from Venezuela or Cuba or Russia or Iran or Iraq, any of those places, yeah. Afghanistan? Or are you going to buy it from somewhere that has a strong capitalist society that allows for innovation and the conglomeration of wealth in one place so that you can spend 10 years right. and multi-billion right. dollars on a single drug that may not even work. And, yeah, I, would take, even I would take it even further than that because you do have some Americans who buy drugs in Mexico or sure. who buy drugs that were made in, in the USA. In, in, exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're subsidized by these other governments because they don't spend the R&D cost. No. They don't innovate. And so what happens is then it's footed by the taxpayer at a 52, 56, 70% mm-hmm. tax rate, depending on where you're going. Right. So that, that's something else that's important. If you get it in another country cheaper, that's because we're footing the bill, just like Canada. Hey, defend your own borders. Go. That'd be entertaining for about, I don't know, a half hour. And then you'd be waving the American flag and using our currency so fast it would make your silly little mounty head spin. <laughs> By the way, uh, hit the notification bell uh, and hit all notifications. Turn them on on your phone, please, um, because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot anymore. No, and not we're not really all that searchable. Uh, if you type in the name of this show, tomorrow it won't show up young turks <laughs> the exact definitely name. young turks will come and uh, please do consider joining mug club because this show that you enjoy we do them every day monday through thursday behind mm-hmm. the paywall and you also get everyone else you get roaming millennial you get glenn beck you get mark levin you get uh who else am i thinking about here uh, other you, people oh you get dave rubin anyway oh, that's please right. do consider bringing up 69 dollars if you're still so many people do the so show without mug club no we the cannot do the show i've got now i've got a mouth to feed coming okay By the way, this is so fun oh oh, oh i also should have mentioned next week we are going to do our one billion view live Ooh, stream yeah. mm-hmm. nice and i should be clear it's it's more ceremonial we crossed 1 billion views a while ago but right. then we had to remove the videos because of the fig shirt you know yeah. um, so we're going to recross it we'll also be doing a live stream when we cross the young Turks and subscribership which should be happening ah, here in the next quarter nice so yeah that'll be and I did I just It'll saw after soon. election time the young Turks I will say oh. this and I don't want to punch down but technically yes. they still have more subscribers on us so we can you know we, can we have a it. couple more months yeah. um, <laughs> it's just an easy target right speaking of bit. no next big target but huge schnozzes um, what a sniffer. So, <laughs> this and it's like Greta Van Susteren. We're seeing the new and improved Greta. We're seeing the new and improved Young Turks. Mm. Mm. Um, <laughs> I was improved? watching them with Super Tuesday, going, "Guys, please do join up." Uh, whatever they're packing. We abs- and by the way, we wouldn't ask if we didn't need it. Okay, all these other multi-billion-dollar companies. Like, well, hold on a second. What happened to the twenty slash thirty million dollars that you got in investments yeah. from Al Jazeera yeah. and Google and Buddy Romer? We've never received any of that. So, how do you need money now? Hmm. We just need you guys to join up at Mug Club. We're not funded by well, any other multi-billionaires. Yeah. It's because their employees haven't yet unionized. Right. This is true. <laughs> they're, they're like the Mike Bloomberg of YouTube channels. <laughs> yes, effectively. Just throwing the money away. Uh, and and that they're very short. Okay, uh, here's another one. And this one is one that, this is one that I think, this issue at large, not just talking about Bernie, 
Democrats will lose. Joe Biden said that uh, that uh, Beto O'Rourke was going to be his gun czar. Oh, wrap oh, it up. Yeah. He's done. Out, done. Election out, is over. Out, done. Beto <laughs> O'Rourke. That's a big goof. <laughs> probably lost Texas exclusively because of guns. Yeah. And then Biden said, oh, that's good. Uh, you know what? I'm going to have him do my guns along with my <laughs> wife, sister. I don't. What is Who's this? Which that's, one are you? What? I shouldn't have drank that bucket yeah. of salt water. Why am I stopping? <laughs> Yeah, the guy that lost <laughs> twice. Exactly. How many rakes can he step on? I mean, really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Only he thinks that they're pool cues. Uh, he has no idea. Hmm. Uh, but let's, work. Let, let's get to uh, Bernie Sanders. He always tries to paint the voice of opposition to his ideas, his proposals, his gun policies, as though it must come from some sinister or exclusively sinister overlord organization. The Congress must do what the American people want, not what the NRA wants. Okay, but if we're talking about what the NRA wants versus what Bernie wants, which really isn't all that clear because he no. comes from the most pro-gun state in the union and he didn't really do a whole lot to yeah, change it, right. still most Americans would side with the NRA because his war, again, is with you, America. 43% of your households uh, include guns. 43% of American households yeah. own guns. And gun ownership rates are highest, by the way, for those in the middle income class uh, tax bracket. Uh, I think it's mm. what, 40000 Do we have an overlay? 40000 to $100,000 mm-hmm. a year. Yeah. They're they're they the people who own the most guns. Now, a big reason, I don't know, this is just a theory, a big reason that they tend to be uh, the highest percentage of gun yeah. owners is because they can't afford the armored car and security detail that Bernie Sanders has oh, out there in Montpelier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that uh, makes sense then. Yeah. Yeah. It was a mystery, yeah. now it's solved. Well, this is what people yeah. say, just call the cops. <laughs> people say that, right? Just call right, the cops. Yeah, right. Well, a lot of Americans, middle class Americans, if you look at that, they would live in the suburbs or they would live in rural areas where police response time might be slower. So, Mr. Walther takes care yeah. of them. Maybe for some folks who yeah. buy a lesser farmer, a uh, lesser firearm mr smith and wesson yeah <laughs> yeah you know hopefully what, and, and never never forget that a lo- the origination of a lot of gun restrictions were completely based on racism they were yeah. saying yeah we're going to limit certain people in certain areas that to be able to have them in predominantly affected minorities and yet you see a huge movement of folks who are saying look if, if we can get rid of these restrictions and let people regardless of their skin color own firearms then we're going to be a better place yet bernie unironically tries to say that he is the candidate yeah. for people of color even though he's insisting that we should make sure to keep guns out of the hands of minorities. Well, we can't have any more Tukey Williams running around. What? what? Hey, he, huh? He's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I think you mean Tukey and Sam, and Tukey Williams is the Crips guy. What? What are they pumping in this thing? Um, he's like, it's like one of those masks in Halloween where you squeeze the pump and just like the blood keeps Squirting. running. Yeah, exactly. Like that's his thing in his head. I think that's what he was going for. Oh. It's a genre, and apparently he <laughs> wiped his head with balloons. Um, <laughs> And the funniest thing, too, is Bernie Sanders saying, not the NRA, but he slips. And he's mentioned many times that his stances, his gun stances, are not popular with voters. He has routinely cited this as a reason for losing an election. 30 years ago, I likely lost a race for the one seat for Congress in Vermont because 30 years ago, I opposed... I supported a ban on assault weapons. It's true. He also pooped his pants. Uh, he did. Ah, mm. So that right there at the pause, yeah, one could argue it. that in tandem, mm, right? Yeah, they for, were the game-changing effect. Yeah. But which one was the leading? You know, who knows? <laughs> who right? knows? Yeah, I yeah, have yeah, no yeah. idea. So <laughs> which is it, Bernie? Which is it? Is it the fact that most Americans want your kind of gun policy, or you lost in Vermont of all places, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, uh, because of your gun policy? Let's move on to the next one. This goes back to your point. Um, the claim from Bernie Sanders about tax cuts, right? He loves to say that Donald Trump, maybe the same thing with George W. Bush, the tax cuts are only about benefiting, and these are the people pulling the strings with the election. Maybe you've bought this. The billionaire class. The billionaire class provides hundreds of millions of dollars in campaign contributions to Republicans. And now is payback time. What this legislation is about, Jake, is giving 50% of the tax benefits to the top 1%. I love that he said billionaire contributions to Republicans. What happened to Bloomberg yeah. and Steyer? Yeah. Exactly. That's the GDP of all of South America combined <laughs> yeah. that they Awkward. spent just to be raped on the stage by Elizabeth Warren. Exactly. That is a, that is an expensive it's not raping. A good look. It is an expensive sexual look. accosting on a national platform. Bloomberg won American Samoa. Okay. Yes, that's he right. He chalked did. one up in the victory column. And that's just because uh, he, he told.
told them he'd give them all free Girl Scout cookies. Yeah. Oh, oh they minutes. don't want them back. They gave them no Samoas. 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 Are you Gerald? You coconut? You made. <laughs> Oh gosh! I'm Bernie quitting. Sanders totally out of ah, peanuts. What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tagalongs, man. Tagalongs. Tagalongs. I have a nut allergy. Really, Pam? Well, not all, exclusively tree nuts. <laughs> Why do we care? <laughs> die. So, don't I don't die. mean that, not, of course not. No, 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 no. no. I do not want I mean, Bernie. Politically die. I don't, no, I don't yeah. want any of these people to die because I want to make an example of them. So, uh, <laughs> little long life and passive natural causes, Bernie Sanders. Not After That's we've made kind. an example of you. Sorry, YouTube. I hope you, please don't, you know. Let's just go with die. So uh, <laughs> here's the thing with the tax cuts that he talks about. Donald Trump's tax cuts, right? His war, Bernie Sanders' war, when he talks about the trap, uh, trap cuts, trap cuts, that's, trap cuts, that's a trap cuts thing. is just for you have trans been... people. Who, oh, yeah, who have yeah. self-destructive disorders. That's what trap cuts uh, are. Um, technical term. Not to be confused with thirst traps, which <laughs> we've gone off on a weird tangent. Uh, <laughs> just Google that. Just what happened is now I'm thinking, I'm thinking, oh no, big tech, they're coming for me, and I'm just, yeah. I'm like, don't say, and then it's going. Ah! <laughs> Out of my mouth, all the things that I can't say. Uh, these are the community guidelines. Violate them. I'm, oh, ju geez. I'm just one lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> can't be only, everywhere. Yes. So time. He's a lawyer of one. So his war, Bernie Sanders' war, is with you because the Trump tax cuts, they reduced the income tax bill for those, by the way, those earning a median income in the country by nearly 60%. Household income for median income families, again, is up four thousand dollars an Boom. increase four times the size of what we saw under eight years of obama and here's something else his war is not with big but his war is with the vast majority of uh, businesses that are american small businesses yeah right the trump tax cuts ha have helped them a lot and his approval rating just hit an all-time high among small business owners again huge portion depending on which numbers you use a majority of americans employed by small to mid-sized businesses yeah. they're not yeah. bernie voters so bernie he's not waging war against Amazon and Facebook, he is waging war against you, the mom and pop shops down the street. Yeah, and with Bon Vino and with Louder with Crowder, these are small businesses. And, and he's picking an issue that most people are doing well. Most people are happy with how the economy is going. And it's like, oh, 50% of the tax benefit goes to the people that pay the absolute most taxes right. in the country. Right. That's not a bad thing. And we'll let, and let, us not for, pay them. let us not forget that he is openly admitted he is going to increase tax yes. on yes. middle class. Yeah. He, just, he just straight oh, anyone, up said, Anyone over 29000 a year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If for the you cash. are paying yeah. any of those taxes, you are going to oh. pay more under Bernie. Yeah. Yes. And he's going to put 1.5 million people out of work when he gets rid of the insurance industry. Right. So we'll you, figure all this out do later, Do you think that thing on his head, do you think he just misplaced an eye patch? Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, he's trying to look hard. Ah. Yeah. No. Nailed it! It was a Bernie button. It stuck him right in the forehead. So It was a camelback, and he just missed the mouth. <laughs> I'm rated retard! So, uh, um, in we have Alex Jones coming up after yeah. this break. You know what? He gets better. I know. Uh, we don't need to worry about the intro. He's not going to be upset by it. Bernie, it, he tries to frame it. And I think a lot of people have bought this. This is what bothers me so much about Bernie, that his war is with Bernie. Billion, uh, billionaires and multi-corporate, multinational yeah. conglomerate corporations. I'm trying to fit in all the buzzwords here. Yeah, it's very true. difficult. He does it well. And yeah. I don't have the I don't have the Bane poison mask on my <laughs> forehead. He always cloaks it as that. But Bernie's war, I want you to look into the policies. I want you to look, like Bill said, about who will see a tax increase. I want you to look into the polls and the fact that Medicare for all would be mandatory. There would be no more private insurance. I want you to look into what his energy policies would do and what they have historically done with gas prices for the average middle class Americans. Bernie's war, I want to be as clear as humanly possible here. His war is not with the wealthy elite. His policies do not benefit most Americans, rich or poor. Bernie Sanders' war is with you. Don't forget yep. that. Uh, we'll be back here with Alex Jones after this. Mm. Sensor button. Oh. You probably infected a lot of people. Yeah, he tried to have sex with me behind the bike racks. But, and then? Then I let him do it. So you had sex with... So you had sex with Jack? He tried. Best thing to do is just let it happen. You know he has AIDS. Uh, 
kommer man. For Black Rifle Coffee Company, the Colombian sun is not just a fair weather friend. All year round, the sun keeps the mountain air as mild as spring. For the coffee trees of Van Valdez, it is the best climate in the world, supplying only the best coffee beans. From the farm of diligent Van Valdez to your door, Black Rifle Coffee freshly roasts each batch to order. The best way to enjoy Black Rifle Coffee is through the Coffee Club. Chosen coffee is roasted, packaged, and shipped free to your door. All you need to do is go to blackriflecoffee.com slash crowder and order today. Mmm, no hay nada más rico que tener mi jarro lleno de Black Rifle Coffee. Cada lote de café es primo de origen de alrededor del mundo asada para tu orden. Creado y aparado de veteranos. Es el único café digno a este jarro. Visit blackriflecoffee.com slash crowder and order today. Viva Black Rifle Coffee. Time to listen up, you silly liberal fucking idiot. Time to listen up, you silly liberal fruit. I'm gonna sit here and say that rape culture is a bit. I'm sorry, I am a woman, so fuck you. No spit zone. Go. I'm there on the other side of Muhammad there. Let's go. That's bullshit! This man doesn't know who Brett Kavanaugh is. I was raped by Brett. 30 seconds! On the rope. Oh, oh. 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 Just to be clear with the uh, social media folks, these are not real guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, these are as water a, guns. When I was in drama class, lasers. I failed my creative tableau, my creative movement piece. You uh, know why? Because really? why? we had to pantomime uh, a violent encounter, and I was doing this. And uh, uh, my communist drama teacher not at Centennial Regional High School, she said, no, you would hold it like this. Don't don't make a gun. Hold the gun. That's just trigger discipline. And then discipline. I told her she had horrible trigger discipline. Yeah. And she uh, promptly, she gave me an F. Well, so, of course. Uh, our, our, totally irrelevant, but uh, our next guest, uh, a lot of you, you know him, you love him. And uh, he's a fun guest to have on the show. We'll yeah, also, of course, have the web extended because you never know how far this is going to go here on <laughs> you the don't. YouTubes. Infowarsstore.com is where you can go to support him. And, of course, you can see his content now at band.video. That's a little foreshadowing because little he's been banned. Mr. Alex Jones, how are you, sir? I'm not too good after you just threatened me with a firearm. Jeez. Oh, you're in another yeah, state. Yeah, it's too late. Right away. It through the, I'm, 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 I'm crapping my britches right now. I, I'm going to call the police. You know, we joke about that, but kids are kicked out of school for doing this now. You aimed a loaded weapon at me. If you are so old that you still wear britches, you should run for the Democratic nomination. <laughs> Yeah, I was about trend. to say, I'm really, listen, people are like, hey, this is awesome. Trump's going to defeat uh, Biden, who has uh, obviously Alzheimer's and dementia or the communist <laughs> Bernie. I'm like freaked out that the Democrats would try to run people like this. I'm actually looking for a curveball here. I'm, 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 I'm actually very upset right now that they are literally, you watch the, these debates, you watch their, their speeches, they're not taking Biden out of context, man. It is like a guy with a mouthful of marbles who yeah. drank five gallons of Jack Daniels. This is yeah. scary. Yeah, well, you know, um, it, well, if we talked about this actually earlier this week. George W. Bush, you know, the fool me once, fool me, yeah, right. you ain't gonna fool me again. I can kind of mentally, I'm sure you do this, right? Because we always talk ourselves. He was a linguist orator master <laughs> online with Cicero or uh, you know top uh, Roman or uh, Greek philosophers uh, like Plato uh, or Socrates compared to Biden who was like my god brother roaches legs hair I we have super <laughs> Thursday I mean it's scary yeah well I think George Bush because you and I we've talked about this when you're always on camera you obviously misspeak and sometimes it's just actually just a little bit of a word whisker yeah. or sometimes you talk yourself into a corner and you go oh grammatically yeah, no, no, we're not cherry picking this no. like I've been watching live speeches and I'm like 
I get depressed watching it. I'm like, yeah. how is a major party of the most powerful country in the world putting this on stage? You wouldn't put this at a third grader uh, play. I mean, this is, this is, this, I'm actually scared. I'm yeah. actually scared. I, I, I'm not, everyone else is vitriolic. Ah, oh, look, they're retarded. They're idiots. Ah. <laughs> I'm actually like literally. Did anyone right right say that, Alex Jones? I don't think anyone said that. I think you're imitating a made mentally, up person. Mentally deficient. Yeah. No, no, it's not the retarded <laughs> issue. It was, the, it was the Kermit the Frog arms that seemed a little unrealistic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Yes. It's not, it's <laughs> not easy being a brown shirt. Uh, okay. So, so I do feel this way too. I think he actually, and having had relatives who've had dementia, who've had Alzheimer's. This is pure speculation, but it really does seem as though there's something short-circuiting. And I will say this, Bernie Sanders, not as much. Bernie Sanders does seem sharp. He's there. He's scary because he's so wrong and he's so far left. But Joe Biden... He's got his communist talking points. Right. Joe Biden can't stick to any talking points. He doesn't even have points and he can't talk. <laughs> Which, again, it's not about Joe Biden. I'm asking you, Stephen, because yeah. I respect you're a smart guy and your crew. Mm. How are they putting someone forward that doesn't know what planet he's on? That's what freaks me out is they're like, what's the plan? Like, this guy is getting worse every week. Yeah, right. Well, here's what I thought. So back in 2016, and people used to give us a lot of flack because we focused on Bernie so much and not Hillary Clinton. And our, my logic was this. Hillary Clinton is going to be coronated, but Bernie Sanders is the movement candidate. I, I would talk about how he's not going away. All of his Bernie bros online, these are the people who are going to be staying around a while. Yeah, Hillary, you were attacking the real communist grassroots. Th yeah, because Hillary Clinton was, I mean, she's, she's an amoeba, right? She's a shapeshifter. I just thought she'll do whatever is needed and she'll disappear. Where's Bernie? He's back here with a vengeance. Little less enthusiasm, I would say, than last go around. So I, I think it's a little bit of the same where jo it's Joe Biden's turn. And so the Democrats are so inflexible at this point and they kind of have the systems in place where they can somewhat guarantee it as, as best they can. Uh, aside from that, I, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Why do you think Biden? No, no, but I remember you four years ago saying that. I didn't like Sanders either. I'm like, no, Hillary's the threat. Why are you obsessing on me? And you actually called it right about Sanders. But it's that they've bet on Biden. Yeah. And that's their horse. And they've got all the same same type of PR, uh, financial and corporate and governmental and political advisors that advised uh, Bloomberg that he could be Mary Poppins and he could be uh, do plays where he was a little mermaid. And oh, could yeah, then, that's it. Like licking people's food. I mean, uh, these people are totally disconnected from Wait, reality. Wait, people's so food? I agree with you, you that. that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, sorry. I, I, I remember now. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I think you're licking good. Yeah. No, it's just what I'm getting at is you're absolutely right, is that Bernie Sanders is the real insurgent communist political candidate. All the others are synthetic, and you see them stealing the nomination from him, from him again. So what do you expect? Let me ask this, Stephen Crowder. Mm. What happens as the dementia-addled, uh, collapsing Biden is in a battle with Sanders, who is cogent and has his communist and socialist armies? What does that look like in the next five months? You, you, well, that that was going to be my question to you, but I, do, I go back and I think of, remember Matt Damon when he was talking about John McCain and Sarah Palin? He said, you know, if you do the actuary tables, uh, there's a very strong chance that Sarah Palin could be president. I don't think someone this old should be president, and mm. she could have uh, she could have the key to the nuclear codes, implying that John McCain could die. We're not hearing that so much about Bernie or Biden at this point. All of a yeah. sudden, age has gone out the window. I, you know, I, I don't know how it goes. I think this is a good thing. I think it's bad for the country. I will say this in the sense that um, we might see the death throes from the left. Donald Trump is likely going to win. I think it's good for Trump. So in the long term, it's good for the country. But temporarily, I see the Democrats tearing each other apart and the rest of America being somewhat collateral damage. And you see more Antifa's and Black Lives Matter. Uh, that being said, I think Joe Biden goes into a general uh, hobbled. He doesn't have a leg to stand on. And if if he did, he wouldn't be able to fight. Find it, but I think it'll probably be Biden, and he's it'll be just a walk-off victory for Donald Trump. What, what do you think, or what is your biggest concern going into 2020, and for the country at large, frankly? Well, you can't fix perfection. So what you said is absolutely what I think. That's literally out of my brain. It was like crazy. That's exactly what I see. Which then goes back to the same question: What the hell's going on with Democrats? It's one thing if they're corrupt or have problems, yeah. But to put a dude up that can't say one sentence straight, mm -hmm. I am legitimately freaked out by this, and. And look, I like Trump on a lot of fronts. I don't like him on a lot of fronts. Right. And the way he's not stood up against censorship, the way he's cozied up to the dictator of Turkey, there's just a lot of missing spaces there. And then all the marbles are on Trump. What happens once he doesn't need his constituents, once he's president-elect? Because the media tried to say, oh, Jones secretly wanted Hillary in 2016. But no, I wanted Trump.
I hate Hillary Scott, right. but now I see Trump who doesn't need his constituents, and now everybody's pro-Trump. See, I'm the guy that's still pro-Trump, but not as much, right? Because I'm 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 the uh, what they call you know winner patriot here, not sunshine patriot. I'm just asking conservatives, what are we going to demand of Trump? What are we going to say we want from him when he does run the tables against the Democrats and is not standing up against big tech can sure censor people if they want, but they can't coordinate with other big tech right. and have AI surveilling you in live time on private messengers now on Facebook, controlling what you say. This is this is the Chinese social credit score. So I, 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 well, let, I let me ask you this. Let, let me answer. Ask, I, I, actually, I want to ask you, you, you this um, because I kind of go back and forth. Yeah, I'm worried that without needing his constituents, you know, because Donald Trump wasn't always a Republican. He wasn't always super conservative. I like to think that there's been a, a change. He is more conservative. I, I have two minds about it. Either it could be a second term where he's unfettered, and right now he's trying to play it a little safe until he gets there so he can hopefully enact more positive change. Or at that point, do you think it's more likely that we see a side of Trump that we don't like when he doesn't need his voters anymore? It could go either way, because typically a second term of a presidency is go hog wild, and they get the, the, the bulk of their agenda done, the sort of things that might be a little bit harder to push through. Well, exactly. I think that as it becomes clear that Trump's could have won in a landslide barring election fraud. So I don't think he has it at the bank yet, but it, it, he's, he's very close to that, a landslide. That, okay, what do we as real patriots, nationalists, conservatives, Christians, what do we then demand of Trump? Because we brought him to the party, we got him elected, and now he's there. I think if we just sit back in the Trump cult, that he will then listen to other special interests. And if one thing I know about Trump is true, it's that he responds to pressure. He responds to what letters come in, what calls he gets, what he sees on the street. So I'm just telling Americans, as we prepare with 242 days left for the election to win, we better start to discussing, hey, the real victory is holding Donald Trump's feet to the fire. And yep. again, I'm not saying I'm against Trump. I'm not trying to get-, get No, no, get I think it's a good point. Brownie points for the Democrats. I want brownie points for my family in the future. And I'm just being honest that some of the choices I've seen Trump makes reminds me that we better be engaged with him or he will forget us. Because I don't think he's a bad guy. I think he's a good guy overall, but he literally remembers the last thing he saw. And so yeah. that's why they try to isolate him so much. We had better be bullhorning the White House and flying around airplanes above his events and at his events and calling him and talk radio because he, he really does respond to populism. But if we don't respond, then it'll be blacked out by the corporate media. And then we, 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 we've got a big problem. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I think we need to hold his feet to the fire. That's what we've tried to do here. And we did certainly through the primaries and then support him as best we can. I would like I'll tell you what I would like to see. When he first became president, you know, one of his first actions was reversing the reversal of, of the reversal of the Mexico City policy. Yeah. He's probably been the most pro-life president policy wise that we've seen in, in recent years, which to me is really important. Uh, so he got some of that done. He got a lot done, you know, fiscally. I would like to see him do that, like you're talking about, in getting an answer from people at big tech and finally actually keeping their feet, holding their feet to the fire yeah. in determining the rules here going forward, because this is going to be the most important battlefront going forward as to whether companies want to identify as platforms or publishers and what kind of protections they enjoy there. And I think we at least need an answer. And that's what we don't have. I think that's the first step. And I'm always amazed that it doesn't seem as though it's been pushed for. We've seen a couple of tweets about it, but we haven't seen yeah. nearly as much action as I'd like to see. I'd like to see that first when he gets reelected. I mean, I totally agree that that codifying, whether it's a utility or whether it's a private operation, if they're private operation, they, they lose liability protection. Right. No, they, they're gonna wanna be utilities. And the truth is Hillary lost four years ago. So they went to Google and Twitter and Facebook and said, you're going to help us win. Well, guess what? It shows they don't have as much power as they thought. Despite all the censorship, the tables are totally turned against them. But just as a citizen being surveilled on what I say in live time, it's not just the censorship, it's that they're surveilling me in live time to block what I'm saying. Like six months ago, CNN's like, we believe Jones is still on WhatsApp on Facebook. Well, he's not there, but we've issued a list of thousands we want banned. And then Facebook goes, hmm. we're banning conservatives that are sending private messages. You're surveilling people's private messages right. because they're conservative? That is like beyond communist China and is an existential threat. 
So we just need to have a discussion. Well, I wouldn't even say beyond communist China. I think a big I think a big reason for this is uh, they have to play ball with international governments. And you know what? I think a lot of Americans don't realize freedom of speech. You don't even have to go to communist China doesn't exist in Canada. It doesn't exist in the UK. And if we don't stand up for it here, then communist China becomes the standard bearer. Yes. Whatever government demands a standard then that becomes a standard. So if America goes, oh, we're just free market, let companies do what they want. Well, you just let communist China then exactly set the parameter and and, and set the guidelines. I think you have to go with the country that allowed you to create, to develop, to invest, to innovate a company. And obviously where you are based, whether it's Google, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Facebook, you have to go by the guidelines, the rule book, the constitution here in the United States, especially if they're anything resembling a public utility or a platform. Because otherwise, like you said, if you're trying to play international, ball, you go to the lowest common denominator, and I would have to be immediately hauled out in cuffs and handed over for a beheading for painting Muhammad. So it, there really is well, no exactly, Stephen, Stephen, you'd be executed in Saudi Arabia. Yep. You'd be arrested in China. And, and, and is that really what um, we built all this to, to just say, oh, we do business there now. So whatever your rule is, that's what I always tell Trump. And I even sent him letters that lawyers write up plans for him and all of it. And that's you just said it right there. That's it. If we don't set standards, China does, and then they go, oh, there's no free speech. So this argument of, oh, it's a free country or it's a free company, that's not how it works. In reality, it's multinational. And if we don't create something that America stands for, well, then we let everybody else define who we are. Right. I'm not, And I don't even want to go all the way to China. Just Canada. That's crappy enough for me. I don't even want to play by Canada's rules. That's that why far. I left. Oh, Canada's like arresting people, as you know, for like nothing. Yeah, well, and the people, obviously, uh, a good friend of ours, Mike Ward, uh, his uh, co-host of his podcast, uh, Pantelis, writes for the show. Mike Ward just lost, has to go to the Supreme Court now for telling a joke before a human rights tribunal in Canada. scary. I'm going, wait, these are the same people. These are government officials who could be flagging your accounts on social media. Okay, but getting back to, um, yeah, so I would like to see that first for Donald Trump presidency. Let me ask you this. Do you... um, do you think it's rigged against Bernie or do you think these are the rules that Democrats have put in place and they kind of have to play by it? Because I do always find it a little bit ironic that the party that opposes the Electoral College is the party that has super delegates in the primaries. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not that wonkish. I still don't fully understand super delegates. It pretty much seems like, well, or we get to pick whoever we want. We interviewed like four years ago a, a, a Hillary super delegate from California. Uh, Richard Reeves, our reporter, interviewed him. You can find it online still, even though most of your stuff was deleted. But just type in Hillary Superdelegate admits, or Hillary Superdelegate says Hillary will be chosen. And he goes, Bernie Sanders can win all he wants. We've already been chosen by Hillary as superdelegates by the party. She will win. And that happened. Hmm. So it, it, somebody like you or I who isn't into authoritarianism, we, we, we try to project normalcy and freedom onto it. No, it's not there. The Democrats have a rigged party system I'm not an enemy of Ted Cruz. He's, he, and I, I think the guy's a great guy, but Ted Cruz tried to follow the Democrats, remember, and take like Colorado without a vote or whatever, but that didn't work because people fundamentally said no delegates should go with the popular vote. But Democrats are so cultish uh, that they stole the nomination from Bernie. And you know what? That was wrong fundamentally to do. But as a Machiavelli, I'm not a Machiavelli, but wearing a Machiavelli hat, Bernie might have beaten Trump in 2016. So the fact that the Democrats are so corrupt yeah. The fact that they piss in the face of populism is why they continue to lose. I mean, you know Bernie really is winning all these states. Nobody. I don't know that he's winning all, all of these states because he's doing really poorly with black voters and surprisingly with older white voters. No, I, I just know what I see. And I'm in Texas and I fly around. But you're probably, I mean, I, look, it, it's not scientific. Oh, I just oh. see Bernie Sanders stick. Sorry, I wanted to ask you this about Texas. Sorry, now, I'm, now, see, you're so high energy, then I get high energy, and then we're just like ping pong balls, bing, 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 and it's like That's pong, Go ahead. there's no stop. Yeah. Texas, a lot of people were surprised at Bernie's showing in Texas, right? I, I've heard a lot of Democrats, an argument being made from Democrats saying, well, you know what, this shows how Bernie can actually reach the moderates because Texas is a purple state. And I go, hold on a second, mm-hmm. that is a gross misinterpretation. In Texas, you have red Texas, freedom-loving Texans, as, as far right libertarian, liberty-minded as you get, or communist nudies and hippie hot. You don't really have moderate Democrats in yeah. Texas, and that's why Bernie will win a place like Texas. No, you're right. It's true about Texas. You've either got super libertarians. I wouldn't call them right-wingers. They're libertarians. Like yeah. I said, you live here. You know that. They're the libertarians or they're communists, and it gets more radical every day. So, yeah, no, I, I mean, I agree with that statement. That's why Texas is so close to going blue. Because it's just a divide. There, there's not like a middle ground. Right. Um, I want to ask you about this. Uh, y- 
Bernie Sanders, didn't you guys some, I think we have some, some video here that will play as B-roll. Some of your folks were assaulted, right, by the B Bernie bros, the brown shirts at a, a, an Austin rally recently? Uh, I got assaulted. Um, so did uh, Owen Troyer. And, and we couldn't even have the footage. I mean, I had security guys that police said, go behind the rally 200 yards. That's where you're at. So right. we're like 200 yards behind the back fence. So we're like 500 yards from Bernie. And like literally fat women start bouncing like a video game towards us and start attacking. <laughs> I had to leave that Sunday, go do my show, so I had to leave. So they they hit the security guard between the eyes, split his <laughs> split his head open, and just started insulting. And we had to retreat because the awesome police would do nothing with just I mean, yeah, it was insane. And imagine you literally like four foot seven women that weigh like four hundred pounds and they're just like going, F you, die, attack and attack, attack. Yeah, I've seen and that. it's 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 overwhelming because if it's a man, you'd go ahead and smack them. Right. But it's right. a little goblin woman. And you don't know what to do. <laughs> this is what I worry. You know, I know that everything you are saying is true, but do you ever worry that because of the way you describe it, people will say it's untrue just because you said goblin woman literally yeah. bouncing. I know it's entirely descriptive, but people are like, obviously, Alex well, Jones, there are no goblin got, women. But I've seen the footage. I was there where, like, these little short women go, boing, 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 and you're bouncing. And you're like, they're, like, they're going to stop, right? And like, bam, like, like ah. And they're like bouncing into you, yeah. and like they're That's like, I'm gonna accurate. hug you, and like this dude punches him in the face. I mean, no, I was there. Where was this Bernie rally? Was it in a bouncy hop? <laughs> was it in an eight? No, no, it was like they sh they didn't even. They, if I wanted to take over the main fairgrounds, they would charge me like thirty thousand dollars. We tried to do it. It was all free. You had a huge Texas flag up and an American flag, and like I said, he's like five hundred yards away. They go, yeah, you can go to the back of the stadium, two hundred yards. The police go, this is your this is your free speech zone. So we're like there for bullhorning. And then once he starts speaking, they can't even hear us with a bullhorn. They just start attacking like zombies. Yeah. And 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 you know it was. I mean, it, it, believe me, I don't know what footage you've got, but if you if, if you go to like Owen Troyer attacked yeah. or okay. Infowars security attacked, it's in the footage. You, you see the women. They're yeah, like I saw Owen. I didn't see. Up. I didn't see you get hit by the paraplegic on a bouncy ball. But um, I had just I had just left. I I, I, oh, okay. I had already been a. Yeah, I saw the Owen video, so I didn't know yeah. that the Owen Troyer. So you that's saw the green tooth woman. I don't recall a green tooth goblin, green but tooth I remember them. Goblin. <laughs> I remember someone quite portly <laughs> <laughs> who was unattractive. Man, you got to watch these videos. Okay, man. I'll need to see yeah. more of them. Literally, are like they're like, hey! <laughs> and they're like got green teeth. And they're like, we're hugging you, and they start hugging you. They start hitting you. Oh, okay, I mean, dude, there's hours of footage. Okay, oh, all right, hours. Speaking of hours, we uh, we are going to go over. So we're going to go to the web extended Alex. So for people who are not Mug Club members, it is uh, InfoWarsStore.com and Bandit Video. Let's talk about uh, Roger Stone a little bit after this break. One minute. And viewer discretion advised. You're about to see green tooth goblins. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome, babe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought I tried something new. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Watch this and more at our other channel, Crowder Bits. So, healthcare and overtime at two and a half? Three and a half in dental. We can do that. We did it, guys. If you're listening on audio, you're probably wondering what's going on. If you're not listening on audio, subscribe at SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. Hey guys, Whistleblower22 here. Sorry about the gap between videos. I got kicked out again. But I promise this new scoop will be the biggest of my career. To be honest, once I expose this, I fear for my life. It's time for the truth. Pete Buttigieg is not gay. The story never added up. Not coming out until his 30s, recoiling from any physical intimacy with his alleged husband. The deep state has gone to great lengths to cover up and rewrite Mayor Pete's history. Because not only is he not gay, Pete Buttigieg is a plant. He's been handpicked by Vice President Mike Pence to run for president, and then, once installed in the White House, he'll sign an executive order to create Pence's gay conversion camps. 
It's been Pence's plan all along. And when President Trump didn't agree, Pence went with plan B. Plan Buttigieg. Thanks for watching, Anons. I'm gonna shout out everyone who contributed to my GoFundMe, starting with uh, Mr. Patrick S. So yeah, guys, thanks for the support. Whistleblower we'll out. Good one. Drowning dance for people who are new to the show. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. That was the <laughs> me. True. It doesn't make any sense. When I was a kid, I jumped off the high dive at the public pool, and then a lady pulled me out. She was angry, and she panicked. Oh, and she told my parents, can you believe it? And my parents were like, yeah, he jumps off the high dive all the time. My parents said, we don't want him to be scared. We don't, we, we don't want to instill that in our son. Yeah. He's good. You know he what is him. scary? What? Some random lady just pulling you <laughs> yes, out of the hole. Yes, That's it is terrifying. It's terrifying. <laughs> and then she burned me with her cigarette and seemed to enjoy it. Mm. You know, I think, a, yeah, I think she was just a sadist it's looking back. Uh, by the way, Alex Jones, of course, there's an extended, I think it's like thir 20, yeah, 30 minutes. 20, another yeah. 20, 30 minutes where we talk about a whole lot. Mm. We it's talk about, ce n'importe quoi. That's French for it's whatever. Uh, <laughs> and uh, next week, by the way, we are going to have the 1 billion live stream yes. extravaganza. Ooh. So uh, a very long guest list, all kinds of special appearances, surprises, looking back on effectively, uh, well, really it's been since 2006 I've been on YouTube, but really yeah, since 2009 true. that I've been doing political content. So, um, and this is one of those things, it's, it, it really is meant to be a love letter to you guys. I didn't want to do it. The guys here said, you know what? It's, it's really, it's not about an ego thing. It's that the fans are the ones who, you guys, you out there have, yeah. have made this happen. And I am tremendously appreciative. I really am. I don't think that it's uh, we're anything special. I think the fact that you choose to tune in means a whole lot to us. So we're going, going to try and continue to earn it and make it worth your while. Please do, uh, if you want this to continue, consider joining Mug Club. All right. Closing segment here. This one, I wanted to talk about this. This one's for the, for the women out there. Now, here's why. Because we get a lot of female viewers, um, particularly at live shows. I'm always surprised. It's maybe like 40% yeah, pretty much, yeah. women, which is not very typical for you know a, a comedy show or a, a political right. programming, period. Now, yeah. whether it's left or right, women don't tend to be uh, the major demographic there. But we get women of all ages, colors, sexual orientations. Uh, the one constant I would say is they, they tend to be strong-willed women, and they, as a general rule, quite fetching. That's true. Typically yeah. speaking, we have good-looking... Now, the men, no. Not covered in boils yeah, it's and disgusting. SARS and yeah. stuff. Kinda and always oily. wheezing the... <laughs> I really liked episode 242. <laughs> Stop it. That's a good episode, though. It is a good episode. Yeah, good. I don't even remember it, but <laughs> he's right. sure it was good. But they're all good. That's, That's why. True. Trick question. <laughs> so <laughs> this is for the women because I usually speak to... And I've had some, some letters from people. And you can send in, by the way, your video submissions to loudwithcutter.com slash ask for, for anything. Your fan art, your fan videos. But um, I usually speak in these closes. Uh, I direct it at men because I, you, know, you, you speak to what you know. And obviously, I'm a man. But I, I don't want women who tune into this show, uh, a surprising number, to be left out in the cold. So this is for you. And uh, I'll still be speaking about men, so hopefully helping you by letting you in the other team's huddle a little bit. I've heard a lot of women, and we do it when we do life advice often on Mondays, that it's really hard to find a good man. I hear this quite a bit from women out there. And listen, it's true. That is absolutely true. It's hard to find a good man, just as it's hard to find a good woman. In the era of feminism, it's hard for a man to find a woman who understands what being a good wife is. That's just like it is for women and husbands. It's not really something we're taught anymore, right? We're taught, well, you don't have to be X. You don't, you don't have to be masculine. You don't have to be strong. You can be sensitive. For women, you don't have to be a stay-at-home mom. You don't have to cook dinner. You don't have to clean the house. And you know what? All of those things are true. But it doesn't make you a better woman or a better wife. They're just choices. And, and most of these choices are amoral, okay? But we don't, what we don't talk about nearly enough anymore is what you do have to be. We talk about how you have to love yourself and how you don't have to fit into any molds, but what is it that you have to be? What is it that you have to do? Because in order for you to be uh, a good woman or in order for someone to be a good man, there has to be a standard. And I will say this, 
for the women out there looking for a good man, there are certain things that a man has to do. There are certain standards that you should be looking for. And I think that women today are taught to look for the wrong things nearly always. Let me explain. First off, nice. How often do you hear, like, what is it? Well, he's nice. Could not be less relevant to looking for the right man. Throw it out. If you're looking for a good man, nice doesn't even enter into the equation. Now, if you're asking, is he generous? Is he compassionate? Is he merciful? Is he empathetic? Does he treat people and women with respect? These are all good things, of course, because these are character qualities. Nice is not, because nice is Circumstantial. Eddie Haskell was nice. Hitler was apparently nice to kids. Osama bin Laden apparently was really nice to kids. And here's something that I think is important. A lot of women, they'll, you'll choose a man because he's nice and then complain that as a husband, we see this a lot, he's not living up to the expectations or he isn't giving you what you need. And then we go back to it's difficult to find a good man. Here, here's the deal. It's important that you find a man, okay, a husband, yes, let's not talk about nice, but who is loving toward you, who is compassionate toward you, who is considerate. As a Christian, I believe that a husband should love his wife as Christ loved the church, which means it's his own body. What does that mean? You don't abuse your body. You take care of it, you only get one. So I'm going to assume before I give you the rest of this advice that you're starting off with that. Not some domestic abuser who should be put behind bars, okay? Don't take this out of context, otherwise this won't help you. But something else I would like for you to take into consideration, women out there who find yourself struggling to find a man. If you have to choose between a man who is generally nice, more specifically a man who values, I guess nice, over righteous anger, you should pick righteous anger every time. A man who values nice above all else is not a man who can lead a family. He's not a man who can protect you. He's not a man who most, impo most, most importantly can serve you. And by the way, it's also pretty damn easy to be nice. It's very easy to go through life being nice. I'm not talking about being polite, but being the nice go along, get along guy. It's easy to be confrontationally evasive. You know what's harder? Righteous anger. It's harder for a man to grow a spine and stick his neck out from the foxhole, get in the fray when it's the right thing to do. So if you're dating a man or you're looking for a man and he's nice, that's great. But if you've never seen righteous anger, righteous indignation, if you've never seen him bow up the hair in the back of his neck stand up, you've never seen a guy who gets passionate about injustice or maybe comes close to getting his dukes up, that's cause for concern, ladies. And I don't mean, when I say righteous anger, let me be really clear here, I don't mean that he gets mad because someone cut him off in the car, though I do, especially if people don't know the left lane is for passing. Remember we both knew someone who got a, yeah. a ticket for going slow in the left lane? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the gayest ticket ever. Justice. I, and by the way, I don't just mean physically protecting his wife when I'm talking about a man. Uh, I'll tell you this, okay, let me give you an example. I had my wife come home um, from work, and there was a woman who was, base, who was, not basically, she was psychologically, verbally abusive toward my wife. Uh, maybe there was some jealousy that I don't know, I don't want to copy paste motivation, but the actions were unacceptable. And I remember hearing the stories, um, one in particular, my wife came home and she was, she was really upset, you know, she maybe was crying a little bit. And I remember thinking, God, you know, I, I, wish, this, I wish this person, this broad were a man so I could go over and settle this thing. And I don't mean assault him, but I mean have a man-to-man -man talk. But I can't, can't do that when it's a woman. But I did talk to her. Um, and that, that righteous anger, by the way, it, it stems not from nice. It stems, this is something that I think a lot of women miss. Righteous anger and aggression in men, it stems from love. In that instance, it stemmed from love for my wife. So the easy thing in that scenario would be to be nice. So, oh, well, things happen. It is what it is. That's what, that's what we hear a lot. Don't you love when you hear that? Oh, it is, it is what it is. You know what someone is usually saying when they say that? They're, they're actually saying, well, uh, I is a pussy. That's what they're saying. <laughs> okay, so I want you to think, if you're a woman out there and you're looking uh, at a man, kind of think of it as a puppy. You ever had to pick a puppy out? Uh, I don't advocate for pet shops, but maybe at a breeder. Um, you're looking at a bunch of puppies, you take one from the litter, what do you do? You take the dog, uh, especially, by the way, if you have kids, you, you, you roughhouse him a little bit. You roll him over, or you wrestle him or her, you grab a chew toy, you play some tug of war. You want to see if that dog has a little bit of fight in him, particularly if you're looking for a guard dog for the family. And by the way, when you're looking for a husband, a good man, you're always looking for a guard dog. You are not looking, ever, in that instance, for a golden retriever, period. 
Fun for a dog, never for a husband. You want your husband to be a German Shepherd, a Rottweiler, a Doggo Argentino. You want bridled power or it will harm you more than having a husband who uh, is maybe a little easier to handle but who has some spine. And I see women looking in the wrong place all the time and they're disappointed and i understand it you're disappointed in what you find in men it's because you've been lied to it's because we failed young men in teaching them how to be men how to grow into adult men in teaching them how to be powerful and how to bridle their power and i mean physically emotionally spiritually we need to develop powerful young men so that we can teach them how to bridle that power and and, and we failed um a lot of young men in not teaching them what righteous anger, what right, when righteous indignation is appropriate. And we failed young women too, by the way. I, I'm telling you, the women out there, you've been failed by many mothers, by, I hate to say it, many leaders in the church, certainly by feminism, and not being taught what to look for in a man and what it is that you should seek in a man. And so what happens? What happens? We end up with this where women focus on nice and then say it's really hard to find a good guy. We focus on a temporary transient happiness, on a get along attitude, and we end up with a lot of women who are unhappy and men who are unhappy because they don't feel good about themselves. It doesn't feel good to be a spineless pussy. So let me tell you this. If you talk to a lot of women out there who've had um, a divorce uh, or a marriage on the rocks, barring obviously sex and finances, which are sort of the root cause of a lot of problems in marriage. Um, but if we're talking about individual problems with their spouse, and I would encourage you to, women, this is a test for you right now. Think of women who maybe are in your circle of friends who are maybe having a rough go in their marriage. Be supportive of them. And also, maybe find out why. Right? Ask women who've had unsuccessful relationships what the problem was. I guarantee you, you will more often get a response from women that their husband just didn't care, that their husband just checked out, that there, was no, that there wasn't any passion anymore. And often, you know what? Often that lack of passion that he doesn't care, that's what leads to cheating. Now, of course, I need to always, I hate that I always have to say this, but people will take things out of context. We have to take out the extreme examples, the domestic abusers on both sides of the equation. I don't want you to misconstrue what I'm saying. When you eliminate those monsters who should be behind bars, often women, the ones who complain about their husbands, the complaint is, you know what? He's just not really much of a man. And then I want you to ask, women who've had successful relationships or women who really love their husband, what he's like, almost always, almost invariably, they'll come back with an answer like, oh, well, he's, he's difficult. Sometimes I want to strangle him, but they love him. There's passion there. And you know what? That man who shows righteous anger, that man who shows, by the way, sometimes virtuous violence. A lot of people, we assume that violence is bad, not advocating violence for no reason, but sometimes violence is virtuous. Sometimes violence is used to rape somebody. Terrible. Sometimes violence is used to stop a rape. So how do you know it's righteous? You know that it's righteous or virtuous when it's aimed at evil, when it's aimed at injustice. But if a man isn't strong, if a man doesn't have power to bridle, he can't aim anything. And righteous anger, by the way, I wanna be really clear women so that you don't find some domestically abusive guy. This righteous anger should never be aimed at you from your spouse. Now, they can be angry for you Right? That's a miscommunication that often happens with women and you're told that it's toxic. Right? Well, this, there's a miscommunication and sometimes you think your husband's mad at you or the guy who you're dating and they're actually mad for you. I've had this happen. My wife, in the situation I was talking about with this, this, this woman at work, I got upset. Why? Because I wanted to fix the problem for my wife and I couldn't. And I was furious. And then we figured out how to bridge that gap in communication. But I want you, women out there, this is, a this is the test for you this week, this is the challenge. I want you to ask women who you know, who you respect, who have husbands, ask them if their husbands have a backbone. Ask them if they've seen his righteous indignation, particularly the ones who have strong husbands. And then I want you to ask them if there's ever been infidelity. And then I want you to ask them if there's ever been domestic abuse. Then I want you to ask them if they've ever feared for their safety. In most cases, they won't have. There are exceptions. As a general rule, that's not the case. Because the abuse, this is important, the abuse, the mistreatment, the bullying that comes, the bullying that happens toward women at the hands of men, it happens at the hands of weak men who stand for nothing and never stick their, right, uh, their neck out angrily for the righteous. So they go along to get along. Why? Because being nice makes it easier to get your way. It's a lot easier to avoid conflict. It's also a lot easier to lie. So listen, 
Um, a man out there who is nice and has never been angry, uh, angry uh, righteously is, is a coward. He's weak. And ultimately, that's the kind of man who is likely to end up being a bully. Why? Because bullies typically pick the target that's smaller than them, the weaker target, the, the weakest target they can find. That's what a bully is. A bully isn't someone who goes in and picks a fight and loses. A bully is someone who tortures small animals, right? A sociopath. That's what a bully is. And a weak, nice man is far more likely to bully his wife than a strong, aggressive, but righteous man. So women, please, I have to get going here. If you've been looking for nice, if you've been looking for something that, that works and that it just feels right and fits, okay, I'd encourage you to do a 180 right now. If it's not been working for you, stop looking for nice. Start looking for backbone. Start looking for principle. Start looking for a man who, you know, m might be a little bit difficult. Look for, look for a man where, you know what, it may not just click. It may not fit perfectly right away. There may be some puzzle pieces that you're going to have to fit, that you're going to have to work with. And then, if he's the right one, link arms with him and love together. Be tender together. Support, serve each other. And be righteously angry together about the same things. That's what you look for in a man. Not nice. See you next week. One billion views.